Downloadable content refers to digital files that can be downloaded via the internet. The most common varieties are music and video files. Something you may find as a surprise is you're actually meant to pay for this stuff, although not doing so is a crime that is about as likely to be punished as crossing the road without looking both ways. At the moment there are only a few ways of earning money from this. Ethical people who believe stealing in any sense is wrong, and the long tail approach of offering media that is too rare to find by other methods. However, the problem with this is that there is a lot more content available via the free methods. Therefore, you have to question just whether something that was considered not worth sharing freely is something anyone would actually pay for. But not all is lost. To combat this, there are advances being made in the area to create content that cannot be acquired freely. An example is the PlayStation 3, which thanks to constant firmware updates means that its content is only available from its own store. So if you want the stuff, your only option is to fork out the money for it. Downloadable content is the way of the future. At the moment, only sound and video are capturable in files, but in the future we could discover how to store information down to the atomic structure of an item. From here, much like printers can create output, there could be a device that builds items based on their atomic structure. This could revolutionise the way we shop. Say goodbye to ever having to leave the house again, you can now get an atomically perfect pizza at the click of a button. But this is all still quite far off, so we'll still have to wait half an hour for pizza deliveries like cavemen until this happens. Now to the point of the whole thing. The power of this endeavour remains unharnessed, and I believe this is due to the lack of stock-based restraints put onto these products since a file can be copied endlessly. In normal trade, the quantity of an item has a huge effect on the price. If you have a warehouse full of something, you can clear it out for cheap with not much profit and earn money that way. Having a low quantity of something means you can sell it for a lot because it's considered a rare item. Fluctuations in stock like this is what leads to these wonderful events that we call sales. Files do not face this restraint. They are simply copies and therefore will not run out of stock, meaning there is no forced price changes. The effect this has is that there is no rush to buy these products because they will be there tomorrow at the same price. The inherent flaw with this is that it means you have time to consider your purchase, and when it comes to entertainment goods, time to consider means you think of all the reasons why you don't need to spend your money on that. Then happily deciding not to do so, you go down to the supermarket and spend your saved money on a tub of ice cream that is on sale. This is primarily the main reason I've never gotten into this content. Well, this and the fact that I'd have to put in all my credit card details, which involves going to my desk, finding my wallet, opening it, and oh god, I'm feeling tired enough to fall asleep just thinking about it. If this is really going to take off, they need to play the consumer's game. Give them something that limits their time of consideration and encourage that impulse purchase. Sure, it all sounds like a bit of evil marketing, but if you believe in your products, then they should not regret their impulse-driven choices. Because without it, all you're doing is inadvertently selling ice cream.